uh, I'm going to talk about a very important issue, which is the uh, calcific uremic artery lopacy, or sometimes we say calcium relaxes. It is a very important issue. Why? This disease is very serious, as you see. The patient affected, you see this skin necrosis and gangrene. Uh, usually, it is not only painful, but also can lead to <laughs> high insensibility. <clears throat> now, if we come to cancer relaxes, it is uh, poorly understood and highly morbid syndrome of vascular calcification and skin necrosis. It was first reported long time ago, in 1899, 98, by White uh, and his colleague. But more recently, in 1962, it, uh, this uh, professor had uh, uh, created a, an experimental model for cancer relaxes in red, nephrectomized red. This is very important so that we can understand the pathophysiology and we can use new drugs to treat it. <laughs> so if we can to come again to the definition, calcific uremic artery lopacy or calcific relaxes is a devastating, life-threatening ischemic vasculopathy confined primarily to patient with CK. This uh, ischemia, the ischemia may be so severe that frank infarction of downstream tissue develops infarction, as I said to you. The most common and most noticeable damage is in the skin and subcutaneous tissue. But as you know, it can affect deeper uh, as muscle, viscera can, can be affected also. Can semi artery lopacy should be distinguished from benign nodular calcification, we call it uh, calcinosis cutis, which can develop in patients with very high serum calcium and phosphorus. Rob, this is the calcinosis cutis. It looks very benign if we compare it to uh, calciphylaxis. If we come to the epidemiology and risk factor of calciphylaxis, the incidence of calciphylaxis may be increasing. We know why later on. The estimated incidence range between 1 to 4 per 100 patients per year. This might be due to, uh, due in part, to increase the physician awareness and possibly the practice of treating severe hyperparasitism with cancer-based phosphate binding and vitamin D analog. Uh, I think in the recent era, as doctors, we are abusing uh, the cancer, the vitamin D analogs. If we come to the risk factors, there are a lot of risk factors of these in the uh, long term obesity, recent uh, and sudden weight loss, malnutrition, infusions of medications such as iron extreme, removed, and recent use uh, uh, of immunosuppressive agents. Particularly, you know, many of our patients were nephrotic and given immunosuppressive drugs, liver disease, diabetes mellitus, and insulin injection, process of injection itself can be a splitting factor. Use of vitamin D and cancer based phosphate binder uh, uh, causing hypercalcemia, even these things. Elevated aluminium level, this is a contamination of diacetyl water or aluminium containing phosphate binder could uh, help in this uh, catastrophe uh, and concomitant con 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 vascular disease. And of course, use of warfarin. Now if we come to the clinical manifestation of calcium phylaxis, uh, it is frequently precipitated by a specific events such as local skin trauma or hypertensive result. Uh, it is typically characterized by area of ischemic necrosis of the dead, subcutaneous fat, and less often muscle can also be affected in severe cases. These skin changes lead to reveal reticularis or violations, painful, blade-like subcutaneous nodule on the drum, bubble, 
proximal extremities uh, that is in the area of the greatest adiposity. <coughs> this type of calciphylaxis on the trunk, usually we call it proximal calciphylaxis. Here, for example, you see this. B is patient. This is the skin necrosis. This could be fatal. Most patients with calciphylaxis have a long-standing history of chronic renal failure and renal replacement therapy. On a rare occasion, calciphylaxis may occur in a patient with chronic renal failure prior to initiation of replacement therapy. Very rarely, it may occur in an individual without history of chronic renal failure. Some other diseases uh, can uh, Need to catch relax, we we'll know what are these diseases later on. Frequently, patients have been non compliant with dietary. It takes a lot of milk and fish and these things, diet containing phosphorus. Medical is not receiving a specific binder, and or dialysis prescription he is poor, poorly dialyzed prior to the onset of cancer relax. Many persons who develop Calciphylaxis have undergone renal allograft transplantation and the graft may still be functioning when calciphylaxis is developed, but of course he has renal impairment, of course he has problems with his parasyroid gland and his calcium and phosphorus. Patient with a non uremic calciphylaxis, so it is not uremic patient, frequently have history of primary hyperphora. We know our patients are secondary hyperphora. Patients with some ty types of uh, malignancies, alcohol and chronic liver disease, or underlying connective tissue disease, or pro inflammatory condition. All these conditions can lead to cancer relaxes in absence of renal failure. Cancer relaxes can also affect hand, not only trunk, but also hand, finger, lower extremities. So it may mimic atherosclerotic peripheral vascular disease, and we call it here distant calcium phylaxis. Lesions of calcium phylaxis typically develop suddenly and progress rapidly, so it kills. Lesions may be uh, singular or numerous, and they generally occur on the lower extremities. However, lesions also may develop on the hand with intense pain and is a constant harm. You see this? Gangrenous skin. Okay. And sometimes bullion are there. You see this is calcium axis the lesion along the distribution of the blood vessel. This lesion. This very severe it is important that if you look to peripheral pulse, it will be normal. This differentiated from atherosclerotic uh, lesions. This is cancer paralysis. Now, if you come to pathology, the histologic features of cancer paralysis are suggestive but not acetonomonic, since it can be present with no, uh, uh, we can find calcification in the skin and blood vessel without this syndrome. A specimen from incision and biopsies of area lesion shows sudden histologic change with calcification in the dermis and vessels. Late lesion characteristically show epidermal ulceration, dermal necrosis, and neural calcification with intimate hyperplasia of small vessel and medium-sized blood vessel in the derm and subcutaneous tissue. You see this small vessel is the medium calcification and hyperplasia in the intima. You see here calcification in blood vessel and also in the derm there is widespread calcification. You see this arterial with extensive uh, calcification. Another reason is calcification. Now we come to diagnosis. Although ulceration is an obvious presentation of calcium relaxes, 
Increasing awareness of the condition should allow diagnosis at an earlier, non-ulcerative stage, since when ulceration occurs, infection comes with sepsis and mortality. Biopsies are discouraged since it can precipitate more necrosis because of potential ulceration in the region of incision and the risk of uh, uh, error. You can take area without calcification. Many clinicians based diagnosis of cancer relax on physical examination of the final one. Other potentially useful diagnostic procedure include measurement of transcutaneous oxygen saturation. It will be decreased. Uh, bone scintigraphy and zero radiography. Believe radiography uniformly demonstrate an authorization of vascular calcification within the nerves and subcutaneous tissue. Although calcification is common in persons with end stage renal disease and non specific for calciphylaxis, a recent study showed patients with calciphylaxis had more vascular calcification, more small visit calcification, and knit like pattern of calcification. This knit like pattern when present was strongly associated with presence of calcium nitrate, so it is a matter of severity and spread of calcium deposits. Like here, here you can see calcification in this area, this algebra. Differential diagnosis, the following condition should be considered in the differential diagnosis, systemic vasculitis, peripheral vascular disease, biodermic and urinosa, acerbicoli, cryogenemia, warfarin induced skin necrosis, and systemic oxalosis. These are the differential levels. If we come to the natural history of patients with calcium relaxes, despite intense compound treatment, the prognosis of calcium relaxes remains poor. The overall one year survival is uh, 40 uh, 5% and 5 years of survival is only 75% with a relative risk of this 8.5 times compared with other diabetes patients without cancer access. So it is a very serious condition. Patients with ulcerative or proximal cancer access have the worst prognosis. Infection occurs up to 6% uh, and it is a cause of mortality. How to prevent and treat? Uh, prevention, uh, preventive approach include attention, of course, to calcium, phosphorus, and beta -H. This is the most important and nutritional state. Aggressive program when wound cancer access occur, especially when there is ulcer. Aggressive program of wound care and prevention of super infection, adequate pain control, and correction of underlying abnormalities in serum calcium and phosphorus are mandatory to improve the outcome. This includes cessation, of course, of vitamin D supplementation, intensification of dialysis regimen, and use of below calcium dialysate and non calcium containing phosphate binder, such as sebenamine and tannum and tannum carbonate. Furthermore, local tissue trauma including subcutaneous injection should be avoided. Vitamin K supplementation is advised in patients with warfarin or comarine associated cancer relaxes. Novel and bronzing syrups include sodium sulfate and bisphosphonate. Sodium bisphosphonate sulfate is a very interesting drug has recently been licensed as a uh, for cancer relapses in uh, Europe. It enhances the solubility of calcium deposit, of course, deposit in the skin and blood vessel, because it exchanges calcium with sodium, resulting in extremely soluble calcium cytosulfate. So you are removing deposit of calcium in the site of injury. Besides being a chelator of calcium, Sodium cytosulfate is also a potent antioxidant, so it is an additional benefit. Cytosulfate is given intravenously 
as head of every association in a dose of 25 to 25 gram during the 30 or 60 minutes at the end of time. Apart from the museum monitoring, the therapy is well tolerated. The major side effect of sodium sulfate infusion is the development of metabolic acidosis. This could be corrected. The optimum duration of treatment and potential effect of long-term treatment on board are unknown since, of course, it can affect cancer and both, increasing its solubility as well. Thank you. and this uh, rising of this very important uh, issue and we have to be minded about these complications because as you see in the skin lesions and the gangrenous problems that happen it is very horrible uh, we face this uh, problem that's why I want to ask Dr. Mohammed uh, if we have uh, any steps uh, to follow our patient uh, before rising from these skin lesions and we have to be minded by this problem and we also have to do some things early to avoid uh, this complication. Actually, uh, as I said, the 